In order for clients to achieve results, we know that they must train with a stimulus that is above and beyond what their norm is. With the goal being to actually stress the musculoskeletal system, the nervous system and the endocrine system. In time, and coupled with adequate recovery, these systems will bounce back stronger than before and thus improvement in performance occurs. The stimulus, however, must be hard enough in order to create fatigue. And this can be seen as the dip on the graph. For example, in order to gain maximal strength benefits from a strength training session, the amount of weight being lifted must be challenging enough to the person so as to create the adequate amount of fatigue. If the person just lifted what they always lifted, there would be no challenge and the person would not improve, they would just stay the same. The next important part of the supercompensation principle is adequate recovery. It is during the phase of recovery and regeneration that the physiological processes of adaptation occurs. In other words, this is where the different systems bounce back stronger than before. This is represented by the upward curve on the graph. But it is very important to get this right. If a client tries to train again too quickly after a session and hasn't given their body the adequate amount of recovery time, they will just experience more fatigue and will not adapt. This is where a lot of people get trapped with their training because they often think that more training is better. However, what they actually end up doing is overtraining their bodies which takes them further away from their desired goals. Remember this very important point. When it comes to training, more is not necessarily better. Smart training is the way to go. Let me ask a question of you. Have you ever trained yourself really hard? To the point that you were really sore the next day or even days later? Or have you ever had a big session and for days after you were feeling a little bit uncoordinated or not quite right? If you can relate to this, then the chances are you experience both musculoskeletal and nervous system fatigue. So what actually happens to the body when it is fatigued? Well, musculoskeletal system fatigue is when the muscles and even the tendons and ligaments feel heavy and sore. This is normally because there has been some micro trauma, such as tears in the muscles and a buildup of waste product and in chemical imbalances. These micro tears in the muscles are important because as the muscle repairs, the muscle fibres are reinforced and growth occurs. Since connective tissue doesn't have the same circulation, it may take longer for those structures to repair than muscle. Since strength training can cause DOMS to occur for a few days post-training, it is important to ensure that there is adequate recovery before training again. That is why there is normally a day or two in between these strength sessions, and why it is not favourable to prescribe consecutive days of strength training, particularly to a beginner client. However, the use of consecutive day strength training is a training manipulation that we often use for the more advanced lifter. Another type of fatigue that is often experienced is nervous system fatigue. This is a lot harder to pinpoint as the systems are often quite vague. But someone who is very aware or in tune to their body will be able to know when they are experiencing it. Nervous system fatigue is when the neurons slow down their firing capacity. The message that has been sent to the muscles from the brain is slowed down, resulting in suboptimal muscle contractions that are poorly timed and poorly sequenced. Feeling slightly uncoordinated or not having the ability to get it, or an overall feeling of being tired, can all be indicative of neural fatigue. Nervous system fatigue is normally experienced when someone has done heavy strength specific compound exercises, such as squats, deadlifts, bench press or leg press, just to name a few. The nervous system takes a lot longer than the muscular system to recover, and in some cases after a maximal weight training session, it can take up to 14 days to recover. In ordinary circumstances, allowing a few days between training will be adequate, but the loads may need to be adjusted. This is just something to be mindful of when dealing with your clients. Long term signs and symptoms that may occur due to the nervous system being overtrained are things such as tiredness, feeling run down, inability to sleep and having a decrease in performance. If a client starts to experience these things then it is suggested that they take a full week or two of training in order for this nervous system to fully repair. Another important system that influences the body's ability to gain strength is the endocrine system. Whenever we train there is a hormonal response and depending on what type of training is being done it will elicit a slightly different response. 
The way the body adapts to the training is also determined by the amount of hormones circulating in the system after training. In strength training, we are wanting to capitalize on the body's stress response so that an adaptation to the stress is created. Everyday stresses, such as mechanical stress and chemical stress, just in a couple, cause our body to respond hormonally. Ultimately, this creates growth and resilience. Stress is only negative if it is a long-term or chronic stress that the body is unable to deal with. In training terms, the stress that has been placed on the body is the stimulus or the load. The acute stress causes the body to respond by releasing a stress hormone called cortisol. Again, cortisol has had a bad reputation in the fitness industry, as it is often associated with fat gain, muscle loss and overtraining type symptoms. However, it is chronic high levels of cortisol that is bad for our body. In an acute situation, cortisol is actually an important part of the growth process. Cortisol is considered a catabolic hormone, meaning that it breaks tissue down. So it will help to convert protein to glucose to increase blood sugar levels, it helps to provide short-term bursts of immunity, it lowers sensitivity to pain, and it helps prevent inflammation. All of these are ideal during a training session, particularly when coupled with the anabolic hormones, growth hormone, testosterone, and insulin. Anabolic hormones are the ones that promote growth and help to build the body up. As mentioned, when cortisol is released over a long period of time, especially in the absence of its anabolic counterparts, negative health consequences will appear such as an increase in abdominal fat, high blood pressure, decreased immunity and decreased digestive function. Growth hormone, testosterone and insulin are all released in response to training, with different training stimulus promoting different release amounts. In general, the heavier the weight being lifted and the greater the intensity, the better the hormonal response, which equates to supercompensation occurring. The endocrine system requires a similar amount of recovery to the nervous system, but also relies heavily on lifestyle factors to aid it. The best way to help support the endocrine system is to ensure quality sleep, quality nutrition, and to reduce the overall amount of stress in life.